Hi, we are moving on to particle physics and let's talk about discrete energy first. Before you watch this video, I'll assume you have watched the other two in the playlist. The first one will tell you the history of science when we start to develop the idea of the atomic model. If you remember in the earlier stage of your secondary school, you were told that the atom consists of three things, neutron, proton, and electron. And in fact, the model will get changed from a billy ball, which is a like like simply a sphere, to a plumb pudding, which you know it is wrong, uh, to the Rutherford model. And now uh, there will be some more new models introduced to you in this chapter. As for the second video, it is an experiment demonstration on how we can make the emission spectrum, and when you see it, how it will look like. It is very important to make this observation because this is the reason why the scientists in the past proposed this radical model, uh, which the energy level is discrete. Alright, so by the end of this video, I hope you know how to do some basic calculation on discrete energy. Before that, let's review some basic idea. So first of all, these are emission spectrum. All right, on the textbook, and they are of different elements. This is hydrogen, helium, and mercury, and that's why they are showing different lines because those lines are like fingerprint. For each element, it would be different. And the scientists, astronomers, use it for observing the composition of different star. Also, this is an illustration of the energy diagram, and so you can see uh, n equals to one means the ground level higher end, greater end means a higher energy level. So if they're excited to that level, uh, they could come back to the ground or come back to a lower level and emit a photon. And that energy difference could be calculated by the equation E equals to HF. So the corresponding frequency of that photon or using this equation, E equals to HC over lambda, the corresponding lambda of that photon will be emitted according to the energy. And so this is an example. And later on, we will also um, do an example together as well. And so you can see one important thing is uh, they are using EV in our calculation and also on the graph also. Because um, if we try to use Joule, it would be a significant massive amount of energy in terms of one photon because that would be a lot. And that's why uh, scientists invented a new unit. Uh, it's also describing energy. It's called EV, which we have learned it in chapter 5 earlier. Okay, and here are just an illustration on how we can see visually. So dropping from 3 to 1, or you can also drop from 3 to 2 first, and then drop to 1. So uh, it can have different combinations. Uh, here, the most important thing is you can see there are two diagrams here. The one that you probably have seen in the second video or in school by the experiment is the emission spectrum, which you only see a few lines, and the rest are simply dark, right? Because there are no light emitted. So that's why we call it discrete energy, because only those energy will be emitted. And again, this is called emission spectrum. The one at the top is called the absorption spectrum, and that is done by another setup. But the whole idea is the same, because when you shine the light through those elements, they would absorb that particular energy. So if you look at this picture, uh, this is for both, I think, uh, hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen. And so that's why you can see the position of those lines on the emission spectrum is the same as the missing line on the absorption spectrum and obviously they are being absorbed but then they will be e emitted again however when they are emitted again they will re-emit in all direction something similar to what you learned in chapter 8 and so in this case if you look at the setup there uh, they will emit in all direction and therefore at the end when you try to observe them they will be relatively weaker in intensity and that's why it is showing a more pale light color or even a dark fringe at that particular energy level. All right, so let's try to do an example together and then you know how to do for the rest. It's actually quite simple. So the question says calculate the wavelength of the photon emitted 
uh, through the transition from first excited level to ground state of Mercury. So normally the question will provide you the diagram. However, however, this is from the textbook, so we have to look at the diagram from the textbook. We are not going to look at the emission spectrum because uh, we are trying to use the energy level to find the wavelength. So we can't see the emission spectrum directly. We have to look at this one. So that is going to be figure 7.3 over here. So the first level or ground level is negative 10.44. The first or the level 2 is going to be negative 5.77. So now we have to think about what equation we have to use and obviously you can use E equals to HF. However, if you look at this equation, uh, you can only find frequency with this equation but the question is actually asking you wavelength. So you could refer to another equation lambda equal to hc over e however you don't actually have to use this because if you can remember or deduce it yourself that c equals to f lambda the wave equation simply then you can also deduce that e equals to h c over lambda okay so that could be the equation you use as well so for now, the energy here is actually delta E, if you are trying to make it more precise. And so referring to energy level, then that should be negative 5.77 minus the negative 10.44. That will be the energy difference. As for H, H is a constant, which is called Planck constant. You can also find it in the data booklet also so let's go for it okay here plan constant so you need to learn how to find it on the data booklet also 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34 okay and c is the speed of light so you should know 3 times 10 to the power of 8 if you don't remember it's also in the data booklet and lastly the lambda if you really try to press a calculator using this equation, what you get will be 4.7323 times 10 to the power of negative 43 meter, which is wrong. Do you know why it is wrong? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Okay, the reason why it is wrong is because the energy, delta E, that you find is in a unit of EV, right? If you look at the diagram again, the y-axis here is in a form of EV unit. So when you try to apply to this equation, because H and C are all SI units, EV is not SI unit. And therefore, what you have to do is to convert the energy, this in EV, into Joule. If you don't remember how to convert that, you can refer back to another video of mine, which I'll post a link in the description below. But in fact, what you have to do is simply multiply the energy charge number, which is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So this is what I will have to do here. And so the final answer would no longer be this one. Instead, it should be something like 2.6619 something okay times 10 to the power negative 7 so let me run it to 2.66 times 10 to the power negative 7 meter or you can rewrite as 266 nanometer because nano is negative 9 however 266 nanometer is going to be the ultraviolet and that means we would not be able to see it on the emission spectrum let's have a look so for the diagram on the textbook this is mercury you can see at most we can see up to the violet which is roughly 400 nanometer so 200 something is even on the more right hand side and that is going to be ultraviolet because it's beyond this violet color all right if you're okay with that let's try the next question by yourself question three Try to pause the video now and you can refer to the diagram on the textbook. A few moments later. 
Okay, question three is extremely similar. So we will have to use the same equation again, E equals to HC over lambda. And the energy level change is N equal to four to N equals to four hydrogen. So we have to look up that diagram, which should be here. Okay, and so two to four, 0 0.853.4. 0 0.85 I can't remember <laughs> 3.4 okay 3.4 so that will be the energy difference and not to forget we have to change it back to joule and that's why times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 okay let's double check that yes all right that's the elementary charge so you have converted that to joule uh, Planck constant, okay, maybe I'll just look at the top. We will have 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. And then C will be the same, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And then the wavelength. Okay, so eventually you should get lambda to be 4.875 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, you can rewrite it as if you like to, 488 nanometer. And again, let's check if it is on the emission spectrum. It should be. So for hydrogen, uh, we have got 486. The one that we got is for, yeah, I think it's very close enough. Probably some, some sort of runoff issue and that's why uh, that will produce an a difference between our answer and the one on the textbook diagram but yeah it is pretty close enough